So we've got a bowling ball which has been tossed down a lane at some initial velocity. But realize this ball isn't rotating, it's just sliding along some rough surface. Now because there's friction between the ground and the ball, eventually the ball is going to wind up rolling without slipping. And today we're going to solve for the velocity of that bowling ball once it's rolling without slipping. Now the motion of this bowling ball as it slides down the lane can be broken up really into two parts. The first being what we call translational motion. And the second being the rotation of the ball. Now to get a better handle of what's going on in this problem, we need to take a look at the forces acting on this ball as it slides and starts to roll down the lane. Now the first force we need to worry about is gravity, which is just going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity on the ball. Then there's the normal force holding the ball up, and that normal force and the force by gravity are going to cancel out. But the reason these are important is because they lead us to the friction force which is acting between this ball and the lane. And that friction force is acting backwards on the ball. Now if we look at the translational motion of this ball, that is the, the left to right motion of the ball as it slides along, or the linear motion of the ball. Really we have some mass which is going to be subjected to a friction force which is causing it to slow down. Now using Newton's second law, or the sum of all forces equals ma, in the horizontal axis there's the friction force which is going to cause this ball which has some mass m to accelerate at some rate a. Now since friction is given by mu fn, and the normal force is equal to the force by gravity here, we can say the friction force is really mu mg. So plugging this back up here, we get an expression for the acceleration of this ball as it slides along the lane. Or really, we get an expression showing us at what rate the ball is slowing down because of friction as it slides along the lane. Now this ball is starting at some initial velocity, we're going to call it vi, and accelerating because of friction. So going back to the kinematic equations, the velocity of the ball at any given point in time can be given by this equation, vi plus at. Now the initial velocity of the ball is just that, vi. And the acceleration of the ball we came up with here is going to be mu g times t. Now the important thing to recognize here is that if we say the ball is moving to the right here and that's a positive direction, our friction force is going to be producing a negative acceleration. And ultimately what this leaves us with is the velocity of this ball as it moves along in a straight line as a function of time. So I'm going to call that v of t for the ball and I'm going to put a little arrow next to it to show that this is the velocity of the ball as it moves in a straight line. Now to see how this equation we've developed is useful, I want to turn to a graph of the velocity of the ball versus time. See if we were to graph this function, we'd see the translational velocity of the ball starts at some initial velocity, vi, that is the velocity the ball was initially thrown, but then it steadily decreases according to this function right here. But on its own, this equation will not tell us the final velocity of the ball. And to find that final velocity, we're going to have to take a look at this other component or part of the problem, and that is rotation. You see, looking at the rotation of this ball, this friction force is producing a torque on the ball which is causing it to rotate. Or really we could say, the friction force is acting at some radius to provide a torque. Now torque is given by I, the rotational moment of inertia, times alpha, the angular acceleration of an object. Now I, the rotational moment of inertia for a solid sphere like we're dealing with here, is 2 fifths mr squared, where m is the mass and r is the radius of the ball. Now the catch is we haven't been given r the radius of the sphere in this problem, but we don't need it. It's going to cancel out later on down the line. Now this friction force right here is no different than the friction we encountered earlier, mu mg. So substituting this function and this function into our original equation for torque. We see the mass of the ball cancels out, and the radius partially cancels out. Now realize, all we've done here is applied Newton's second law in a circle, that's torque as I alpha, in order to come up with the rotational acceleration of the ball as it skids down the lane. And it's important to recognize, all that is is the rotational version of exactly what we did over here. We applied Newton's second law to come up with an expression for the acceleration. And just like we did when using translation, we're going to apply the kinematic equations, this time in a circle, in order to come up with an expression for how fast this ball is moving. So 
So using the same kinematic equation, just using angular variables, omega for the angular speed rather than v for the linear speed, and alpha for the angular acceleration rather than a for the linear acceleration. Now when this ball was slid down the lane, it wasn't rotating at all, so it had no initial angular velocity, meaning the angular velocity of the ball at any given point in time, I'll call that omega sub t, is going to be equal to the angular acceleration, that's this whole function rearranged for alpha, multiplied by t. And so this function tells us how fast this ball is rotating at any given point in time. Now the key to the whole problem is that we want this ball to be rolling without slipping as it goes down the lane. And the key to rolling without slipping is that the forward velocity of the ball at some point is going to be the same as what we call the tangential velocity of the edge of the ball. That is how fast the edge of the ball is actually moving. So we need to relate this omega, the angular velocity of the ball, to the tangential velocity of the ball. And realize, omega is given by v, the tangential velocity, over r, the radius of the ball. So subbing that in up here, we're going to get v, not in a straight line like we had over here, but the tangential velocity of the edge of the ball, I'll just put a little rotation symbol next to it, over r, that's really v of t, is equal to all this over here, 5 halves mu g over r t. And again, and our radius cancels out, because like I said, the radius of the ball doesn't matter. And if we were to graph the rotational velocity of the edge of the ball, or what we call the tangential velocity of the ball, we'll see at first the ball isn't rotating, so it has no tangential velocity. But as time goes on and friction causes the ball to rotate faster and faster, that tangential velocity is going to increase. And the important point in the entire problem is this point right here on our graph. You see at this point, the translational velocity of the ball has decreased and the tangential velocity of the ball has increased to the point where they both have the same value. Meaning it's at this point right here where the ball is finally rolling without slipping. And after that point, the ball's no longer gonna slow down. It's just gonna cruise along at some final velocity. So in order to find that final velocity, all we need to do is just set these two velocity functions equal to one another. So pulling this over here, and then solving for vi, then rearranging this for time, we find the point in time at which the translational and tangential velocities of the ball are the same. And taking that time and plugging it back into our equation for the translational velocity of the ball, And we find rather amazingly the final velocity of the ball is 5 sevenths of the initial velocity of the ball. And frankly, that's remarkable. This result does not in any way depend on the coefficient of friction between the ball and the lane, and it doesn't depend on the mass or radius of the ball either. Those all cancelled out in here. It's only the shape of the ball that actually influenced the final velocity of the ball as it rolled without slipping. Now this problem can also be done using angular momentum, and I've done that in the past. And if you want to see that, just click up here. But I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.